as Nuke is right around the corner. It's G2 take it on Godsend, the El Clasico that we've all been waiting for. All of us. We head in to this first map of this last best of three series of the night. That's right, Nuke to kick things off. Oh. We got more nationalities than an airport in this matchup right now. It's pretty good. It's pretty great. Oh. And Godsend, they're starting things off on the T side. It's their pick in the series, and so they for, therefore they have to start it hard as G2 bring a kit smoke onto Jax. And like this, Godsend flashing towards CT. They've pushed off the Heaven player and been given a lot of real estate to roam. Yeah, they're going to move in to try and take this ramp control. Nexa is holding for this wrap round. And there's also a lobby push from G2. Now, they are hot on the heels of Godsent, who made it into ramp, but are going to struggle to go anywhere else. Farlig is holding for Hunter, but Amanek has dealt with Steeko, so it's a bit of a trade at ramp. And ultimately, that's a trade that favors Godsent till the end of time. Bomb now dropped. That's going to get retrieved by Farlig. Crystal over here in main. Looking like they want to try and split A, and we're dealing with Nexa. That has opened up a pathway in. They catch Amanek at the front of the site. They haven't been able to finish him yet, but Farlig will. So bit by bit, this is falling apart for G2. Kenny trying to impress us there with a little flick onto the top of Hut, but Jax opening up the doors to a two-on-two -two retake here. Zen's hiding up on top of the, uh, the Hut door, and Kenny's checked for him. What a weird angle to check. Farlig getting dropped, and now it falls into this 1v1. Kenny versus Zen. Oh. He dances around the site. Oh, up in the air for Zen, but he still gets it. So the pistol round locked in. God said they actually yep. find it on the back of that 1v1. And with three kills coming in from Zen, he's not looking to mess around here. Uh, and just like Hugo said, you know, there's no way that Godson could possibly win this series, but we have to look at it now. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. It's, it's, it's very, very it's early. Going on. To trace. Well, maybe in hindsight, it's a little easier. Maybe. Yeah, this is, a, this is a really exciting team that this Godsend roster. Stiko was tweeting recently, I think it was Stiko, talking about how, you know, it's, it, it's, it's hard building a team with players that weren't necessarily regarded as, like, the star players, or at least not all of them, in their previous rosters, and, like, trying to find sponsorship and, and, and going through that whole commotion. But as a team, considering most of these guys weren't star players in their prior rosters, this is a really dangerous team. So, goes to show. I mean, uh, for someone like Farley, like he's certainly a, a star player. Was in Flames, coming back here as well. So, is it Farley or Farley? I, or? I've, I've always thought Farley. Everyone's told me Farley. Like it's Chris Danish. Farley or I, like yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't speak Danish sadly, but oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna toe the line and go between both of them and calling all Danes. Yeah, Far League, Far League. Everybody <laughs> wins. <laughs> <laughs> calling all Danes. Hashtag ESL Pro League. Let's make sure we get this one right. Is there a G or is it silent? Kenny, yes, he's not silent. He's got a capital S in the back of his name, but Boom. it's Jax to bring the pain. Sneeko trades and the grenades could be good, but oh. Kenny's better quick and no then way. falls off. Far league uh, dead as now G2 look towards the lobby push. <laughs> Might have found a good timing, but as I say, that God sent double back and set up towards Squeak. Oh, Kenny dropped on the rotation, but this is where they only know about Amanek. They never saw Hunter tucked into this corner. And so if Amanek is the next up, well, he's not. Never mind. Forget the point I was going to say, because it doesn't matter. Zen now knows that another man has aggressed in through the hut. Nexa is the only unknown entity, and Stiko is holding for him. This round's going to get mopped up for God's sake. They kind of dig themselves out of that one. G2 able to find a couple of uh, nice deeg kills to propel them back into it but ultimately not enough. It's the way Kenny just, you know, he slides through the Molotov a little bit, gets the one dig. I mean, obviously it doesn't matter, but still pretty cool play there from Kenny S. Hey, I've seen that guy in the fan cams several times. Yeah, he's back, the recliner. Hanging out. Always ready, always watching. And for good reason, we have some gruesome matchups here in yep. the Pro League over these next few weeks. Per perhaps you have Discord and you would like to be on the fan cam as well. That's going to be sl.gg slash fan cam. Type that into your browser. It should pop, uh, pop open your Discord and direct you on your way. It does get a little wild in there. I'm not going to lie to you. Almost as wild as Hunter finding this kill right here with the P250 on a Maiden. Not to be confused with Madden, John, or Steve. 
So when we talk about Nuke here for Godsend, definitely a good map for them. Let's compare their last matchup against Na'Vi, right? They got 16 2 on Dust. Well, they got 16 13 on Nuke. So, you know, but like losing both of them, but putting up far better of a fight on this map. And so that's what we can expect against G2 in this series. Even if Vertigo is a map that Godsend don't really tend towards, I think that certainly could be a worry uh, later on. G2 picked that up since the start. Although, actually, I say that the two games Godsend have played on, on Vertigo, they've won both against Nip and Mousesports back at Summit. It was a great event for them there. But I think a lot of people were leaning towards a player break at that point. Not to discount Godsend's wins, but if they could do it again today, that would be quite the feat. Looking for feet is Zen underneath the smoke. Can't see a thing. G2 are going to hear the footsteps down outside and into lower. They've already put Jax down in dark, and the rest of them will be joining from ramp as well. Yeah, Jax's Deagle has got to deliver a hell of a lot here. There are footsteps all around him. Luckily enough, he does have teammates nearby at ramp, and they've kind of drawn the attention oh, away, man. but only briefly. Crystal will check for it. Crystal in with another and making quick work of these pistols. Now, let's also talk about Crystal's hair, shall we? Yeah, this so guy's I think got that was quite a... the, the mane on him, and I absolutely love it. He really is the, the lion of this team. There you go. We'll let okay. that one hang out there. Yeah, I, was, you know, I, was, I was just wondering. I mean, I, it, there is certainly some product being Look used there. Look at it, there. man. That's insane. Live and well. Um, I've actually contact, been contacted oh. by our, our resident Dane, Bastian Faber, and yeah. he has confirmed there is no G in Farley. Yeah, but he's Danish. Yeah, exactly, Trace. We can trust him. <laughs> and so... Take that G off and run with it. Godsend in control right now, 3-0. and Kenny's on the orb. We got those late T-side smokes coming outside. Line by Farley and Madden. Farley. You can say what you want, Trace, but uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not copying you. I'm my own man and I will say what I want. Okay. <laughs> Do you boo boo? Kenny can't see the cross, and it's a sneak cross as well for Godsend. I like this in the first gun round. It's it's a bit worrying for G2. Do they want to push in or do they want to take lobby when they don't actually know if anyone's crossed or not? They've seen nothing. The smokes are good. There's no gaps. And Godsend get down B. Jax is here. He has been that early rotation, leaving Kenny on ramp to fill the void. Godsend. I, they are taking this on so slow and so quiet. It's going to be an explosion on this lower bomb site. And Steko's still in the lobby to deny any further aggression from G2 if they want to throw it that way. That door's open, Jax. Uh, oh, he has gone unchecked. And now almost in with a double, but it's Farley to get rid of him. Not to be confused Ooh. with Farlig, the non-Danish version. Zen following up with another, and Amanek will at least trade onto him. Now, Kenny found at ramp by the late lurk of Stiko. Still left in this 2v2. Madden's looking to make a bit of a difference, and in a way he does, but not in the way he was hoping for. He's left it all on Stiko in this clutch. Window breaks, but Amanek going to swing the doors, and now Stiko fixated on this window room, goes back to the double door and doubles up in the process. Godsend, they take 4-0. And they're looking to make a bit of a statement here versus G2, who now have no money once again. It's back down to pistols and armor. And God said, this T side's only just beginning, but it's off to a very, very strong start. Yeah, G2 broken early on in this CT side. Not where they wanted to be, but it's the situation they have to deal with now. God sent already showing us what they can do and look to build upon it on this first half. More smokes outside, not the deep ones, just close reds. They're looking for battles. They know that up against pistols, crossing behind smokes is dangerous because G2 could pop through them with flashes or without. Molly in the secret to deny G2's aggression. Already trying to see how G2 will fix the problem that is this outside control, but it's already changed. It's already a new game. Godsend rushing A in through May with that blue smoke. Hunter's tucked. Oh, Madden almost checks him, but he gets dinked by his teammate, and that turns his attention. Mm. Then Crystal, double entry, and Amanek does respond, but it's already lost. The site gone, and Nex is stuck in the vent. There's no one watching it right now, but he can't go far with the player. Close behind him, he gets a shot off, but Steko trades. Oh dear, that could have gotten man. dicey, but it's okay for Godsend. And you know what, Hugo? I look at Godsend, I just gotta say, man, they are looking crispy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, dude, they are. They're yeah. like a crisp out here. They're so crispy. 
too much. Nah, man, that's what you always think, right? You always see God sent play, and it's like, oh, man, that's just crisp. Super. No crisp. other word for it. I feel like I'm never going to be able to use this word again without, like... Next time. You ain't gonna stop me, Trace. I'm my I own man. I'll nobody. say what I want. Yeah, let's get let's get you on that wave a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, but you go. What do you want to say right now? Like, what do you want to say about everything that's going on? Just everything in help. general. <laughs> help. <laughs> yeah, that's probably good. <laughs> well, it's gonna be all the help that G2 can get right here. Of course, they're gonna have weapons in this round. Wall smokes outside, and that's gonna give the illusion, or at least the cover, the concealment that Godsent need to find their way into secret. So far, the only person taking that damage in this round is going to be Stiko. And as I say that, he peels off the quick AK two tap on a Jax. Omnic is pushed all the way through into the radio room. He's found himself pushed past Trophy. And he's got full lobby control right now, albeit Stiko not far. Definitely not to be confused with Farlig. Who? Farley? Oh. Farley, yep. <laughs> Oh, the uh, timing. Steve he got confused. Though. He was thinking about it. Yeah, he turned around. He's watching main, and Amanek comes in on the lobby wrap. G2's taking control, but not for long. Zen Trades, he's had a great start to this game. 12 and 2, and looks to continue on this A site. God saying, they've taken A from every position possible. They came main last round. They've run through the hut. Now they're coming up through heaven. And even though Hunter knows about it, there's so many players to trade. Oh, dear, the secret rotation. A few seconds too late. Hunter gets one instant response. Nexa trying to stop the orb from crossing in, and he does. That sets G2 up for the 2 on 2. Yeah, they only know about Nexa here, so Kenny is still the question mark. They haven't been able to spot him yet. Madden gonna get naded there. Not the most damage, but softened them up with this M4 now to that one shot. Oh. Well, never mind. Madden just gonna go ahead and respond with ah. the double kill from the back Ooh. of the site. He'd been very, very quiet in these first five rounds of play, but here we have him breaking that silence. And once again, breaking the money of G2. My word, like yeah. they've had they've had two sets of buys thus far in this game. Trace, aren't you so glad that you confidently said before this map began that Godsend were going to steamroll G2 and it wouldn't even be close? Don't recall that, but I guess we'll go back and watch the VODs tonight as we always do. Um, no, I don't know that uh, G2 is showing up right now. It's going to take a little bit. Perhaps they're going to wake up. Perhaps they're going to give us a show here because of right now, only one SMG. And, well, there's the show. Hunter has put it on. He takes out Crystal. Things begin to slow down just a little bit again. Number advantage in favor of G2. Again on an eco here. Yeah, Godzilla were really hoping that would at least find an opening kill so they could push off the back of it. But with an immediate death, uh, not a lot of info. He sees two. Godzilla don't want to throw everyone into that A site. G2 holding on all around the map. They haven't got any lower control either. No need with the vent being covered. And outside, they're just gambling that it's open. Nexa can watch the cross to hell, so that's not a worry. But they know that Godsend, if they want, they can walk down to B from secret anyway. So just a gamble for G2 on this pistol round. Now the vent play coming through. Hunter, oh. he's dropped off. He's so blind. And so is Zen, I think, looking at the top of the hut. Open to Nexa in the back. Stiko does go down, but now he's got to come back up for the bomb. If he gets this and gets away, that will be ah. impressive. But this fade nope. is coming oh. through. And Hunter waiting will find his kill. Farley has too many angles to choose from. And Madden now waiting for the smoke fade. There it is. Better late than never. Three from Hunter and G2 on the board. Yeah, that all got very, very awkward after the first death, right? The Mac 10 death charge into the A site. And you were bang on, like, you know, looking at the ground as well, so he didn't get flashed. But then in turn, that gives you even less information to go off of. Hunter was like, yeah, all right, I'll take that. And then that was just kind of the mantra of G2 throughout the rest of this round. Like, yeah, we'll take that. Ooh, another one. Yeah. Like a little buffet. And they were just helping themselves one piece at a time. If they got the, the second player down the vent, Stiko does get down, but the bomb gets stuck. And that makes all the difference. If the bomb was down, then Godsend could have... who didn't need to rush out. They could have just played around that plant. Chris has been spotted, and he does not know it. Jax is so close. And so no one needs to peek outside for G2. Jax has his confirmation, and Crystal is desperately looking for him, but he has no idea yet. Stiko's gone on ramp meanwhile, and then Crystal dropped as he climbs up the boxes by Jax. So this is a great start again for G2. Yeah, seemingly from nowhere, right? This was looking like it was going to be a guaranteed 7-0 scoreline. And then with the force by, they find their first, and now they sit on the precipice of taking a second round. 
That's probably the biggest word I've used while casting in a long while. I like it, though. Yeah. Precipice. Precipice. Respect. Well. Respectipus. <laughs> Respectipus. Is that one of Nip's magic? Yeah, it's right yeah. up there with Hampus, yeah. Rampus. Hampus, Rampus. Respectipus. Respectipus. It's, uh, it's on, I think, on all the Swedish coins. How many legs does a Respectipus have? <laughs> oh. Well, well, less faces than Zen has, that's for sure. He just gets his removed. Farley left in this one. He does deal with the first man, but that's probably it for the tail of Farley in this round. I like the strap on the outfit. That's pretty cool. I'm here to offer like a look at yeah, the... Is it a backpack though, attached? No, man, backpack? that looks like it's uh, like a little holster. God's that merch is cool. Pretty That's popular. fashion, okay? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I don't understand. Fashion. God's that merch that is either. cool, man. I'll admit that. God's that have some cool things out there. I think the most audacious thing I've seen Hugo wear while we've been here was a checkered shirt with Burberry trousers. Burberry now? Yeah. Ooh. Really sure what that is. Oh, that's the pattern on your on your uh, jogging bottoms, man. I know all about. Been looking at his bottoms. Yeah, yeah man. of course, you know. Nice. The lion guys cut the mics. No, oh, that'll be that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They didn't cut us off. But yeah, not yet. We oh, yeah, not yet. We do see the AWP back in Kenny S's hands. And here we go. Finally, it's gonna be G2 that have some. Some firepower here and an advantage over Gotsen. Just one AK there on Farley, not to be confused with Farley, but they are the same person. And so far, the Molotov has actually stopped everyone in their tracks. Yeah, they've got this hero AK saved forward. And so they're kind of hinging on Farley doing absolutely everything in this round. Hunter's tucked behind the CT vents as well. Oh, they're going to try and boost to exploit a little gap up in the top left of this. Now, there isn't much of a gap for anyone with a keen eye. So that's not going to achieve much. Hunter now leaving that CT vent position. Doesn't matter. They're not going to hit A. They're going to look to go towards ramp. But there are two players here, and it's quite the duo to run into. You've got Jax boosted up. Nexa as well, holding just to draw them in, just to bait them into this ramp room. And this is a very scary setup to run into. They don't check for Jax, and this is where him and Hunter really can just go to work. Farley, 3 HP and a lot to do. Looks for Kenny, but Kenny looks for you as well. And now it's all onto Zen. He has gotten very, very deep outside, but G2, they're conscious that they've given up this outside control. And so that kill's just locked in nice and easy for Kenny, who isn't taking this personally at all. Three on the board for G2. And the money has recovered for God's sake. It's only going to be Farley, who is a little more limited here in this round. But the rest of the gang should be fine. Yeah, that just stores the ore power, though, on this T side, which is a bit of a shame. That being said, God's sake already have, like, the building blocks of this half. Six is fine. Obviously, you definitely want more when it's your map pick. And uh, this game's pretty T sided right now anyway, especially online. But, uh, yeah, no ore. Back to the Galil. The God's sake want to crunch A. It's uh, bitten them back from time to time. Hunter falling off the hot roof. Crystal's out, dude. He's waiting on the reload with the flash through. That's perfect. Not quite, actually. Crystal falls. He had the drop on him, but shooting too early. Amanek burning. Has to drop a smoke. He hides behind it as Farley goes for the cross. Oh, dear. Amanek's now trapped. There's no nays to get rid of him. And Kenny's on the flank. They turn around and deal with it. Not fully committed to that A site with Godsend. And now Ramp is an opportunity. There's two CTs here. The AWP is posted for Farley. He takes down Jax. And Nexus now trapped. Farley doubles down. And this is where you want him on the big green. He's found himself two, three in the round. Amanek has dropped lower in time, but in a one on three with 30 HP, even though they won't expect him, well, they will be able to deal with him. Stiko shuts it down and God sent seven to three. This is a great T side right now. Yeah, and you feel like it's gotten even more deadly now with Farley getting his hands on that AWP, right? And no less, it's Kenny S's AWP. So that's, uh, that's a scary prospect indeed. Frustration for yeah. G2.
Yeah, for, for Kenny, right, he gives the opportunity over and he's not even aware of it. G2 are calling for a fast day because that's what happens. Crystal throws himself out into the site. No one actually commits behind it, even though God sent look for kills through the hut and through the door. And so because G2 is so used to going about their A attack protocol, their rotate, Kenny's on the ramp flying, pushing up with the orb, holding the back. He's not trying to rush, but as soon as God sent ascertain he's there, they go, okay, we got the orb trapped. Let's just chase him down. He can't kill all of us, can he? And well, he doesn't get any. So yeah, that just gives the, the room open open on ramp and the AWP upgrade, which is the key thing of both because Farley gets two more kills with it. So free AWP is, is definitely a nice discount deal for Godsend. And Kenny, he's at least got money for his back, right? They did start their three round streak off the back of an eco win, but money has now finally come to a close. They need to win this round. Both teams do. Only one of them will be rich and the other will be broke. Oh, Kenny tries to make it fancy and sometimes Hitting the shot is better than fancy, as Hunter shows us there, swinging out to get the trade. Ramp now contested, flashing in his jacks, but they're already far too deep for him to deal with. And now the rotations have to come in down towards B. Madden is even holding outside. Next, uh, oh, he's lucky. He knows he's lucky. And this is where they should deal with Madden. He actually gets one before getting dropped. And so for Amanek and Nexter in this two on three, the temptation might be there to save as the money has never really been in a good spot for G2, and this round would really solidify that. So it will be the save for these two remaining players. This uh, this this B play is really causing some problems for G2 right now. They have had some good solutions to it, right? But you can't double ramp every single time in the way that they have been with, like these boosts and these deep setups. And that has often been the solution, but it's just trying to time that so that Godsent aren't exploiting other avenues on the map. And they've been... Very good at that as well, right? Like, it's hard to find solutions in a CT side of Nuke when every round the T's call something different. And it, you're always kept on your toes. There's so many options for the T's to do. Uh, the CT's don't want to play over aggressive because we've seen how that can, you know, hurt you. Godsend, they've had nice A takes. They've had some cool outside wraps. They've hit ramp hard. They've gone everywhere. They've even tried the vent dives, although not always to the best of success. And now G2 scrambling, France is scrambling for solutions. Before all of that, an eco. Got to rely on Kenny and Amanek to do the heavy lifting in a round where only two guns have been saved. Kenny's taken his orb towards door, moved away from the ramp room. He can assist outside, but he won't hang around for long. Ways to see if Godson go quick, and they don't. More smokes outside. Will they sneak behind them this time, or will it be another illusion as they try and wrap towards A? By the looks of things, it's a commitment towards this B bomb site. Known to be the problem for G2 in this series and many more. And Godsend do it sneakily as well. Again, no info for G2, but that's what they're trying to change. That's this aggression, clearing out the lobby, making sure there's no one here. Stiko has been on Lurk Patrol, and he is waiting once again. Yeah, Nexus kind of pieced this one together, though, ahead of that information. He's like, guys, the lobby aggression's all well and good, but I could use some assistance down here on B. And he just gets deleted. Kenny, now with the AWP. If there ever was a time for us to see Kenny S, give us the Kenny S round. It is right here, right now. And with Jax opening up onto Crystal close at ramp, that has opened up the possibility of this. Jax is a madman. Hello? <laughs> He's broken? They, they've sent him, he's all, he's how's he's the last guy alive? Like the others are hiding at ramp and Jax running the gauntlet. <laughs> he only stays alive a little bit longer. Full send is what yeah. we call that, yeah. Yeah, Jax is a bit of a hero in this team, right? He'll he'll take the hit, he'll go in first, he'll do the dirty work. And also his English has definitely gone a lot better as well. Not just him like tweeting as well, but it, it, I mean, it's been some time, right? You'd hope. But uh, that was one of the big questions when this G2 roster went international, like players who, who didn't necessarily speak English as well as the others. So yeah, Jax has had a very... Uh, a year full of growing, let's say, and he's turned into quite the player. G2, though, really struggling, and Godsent are, are just beating them down right now, going back to the yard smokes into B. Nexa, he's waiting for the right timing, but Godsent, they're not giving him time to react. They're just rushing past him. He's only seeing the tip of their head as they cross into the uh, L-bend, into Decon. 
So he shoots, but at that point, Godsend don't care. They just run out the door. They just overwhelm the B bomb site. And I like what Godsend are doing with Crystal, right? Like, it's kind of similar to how we sometimes see Alexis B uh, call his T sides on OG. Just like throwing Crystal as fast as they can, as deep as they can, and seeing what he can do, putting up such a distraction. Uh, and, and then, you know, Godsend play around it. Sometimes it's been into A with the Mac 10s. Sometimes it's been, you know, running main roof to outside and killing Kenny. He's had success there. So this time he's going to be spear heading to charge outside. He is the only one there, though, moving into main by the looks of things. Nexus holding the cross. He's got a great position for this round to stop this one. It's a hard spot to check, knowing your back's open to main and garage. So Crystal should be dead in theory. And there it is. Nexus got that kill. Jax is holding on to ramp as Godson try and take lower, but they've been denied by the Molotov. No rotate of Kenny just yet. He sat B because of these outside smokes, but Jax has seen everything. Yeah, and he's going to give up ramp room, too. He's got to get out of there. There's just way too much heat on him. Speaking of heat, Molotov's getting dropped towards Hell. He's going to ensure that the ramp room is compromised for Godson. They get to grab that real estate for free, almost. Yeah, Godsend are looking to hit them with the old fake, though. And G2, they've not over-rotated here. They've played this one pretty safe. Just two players down on B. Kenny is waiting at the base of the vents to deny a drop and then maybe come up on rotation if needed. How about combat opping? Good grief. Look, I'm sliding on out of the squeaky door. Omanek from the Raptors. Some might even call Ooh. it Mustang once upon a time. Reaches in for two before he's eventually traded out. Stiko has the frag. 2v3. 20 seconds on the clock. That flash was excellent. It pushed uh, Nexus out. He had the cross. He could have denied the bomb with 10 seconds left, but now he's got to wait for the plant to come through. G2 can play retake, but no kit means time is of the essence. And a heaven plant with no position for G2 up there. It's covered by Stiko. Kenny came up the fence. Stiko watching his back line. He needs to care about the ladder too. That's where Jax waits for the right time to strike. If he flies up, Stiko has to hit a flick. And now he definitely does. His attention diverted. He looks around at the right time. One on two for Stiko. And they're in the site. He knows oh, about no. it. They don't have a kit, but that Molly's going to keep them back. And no one's on the bomb. Finally getting to stick in. Nexa takes a nade. And Stiko going in. He's got to check this one out. He's killed Kenny. Oh, oh. going down. He's got the second. And there should be time. But it's going to be close here for G2 as they pick up up their fourth round by the looks of things. Oh, to get off the bomb there with only a few seconds remaining for Nexa, that was a hard call to make, but with Kenny dead, it was the right call. And you wonder for Stiko, you know, it's obviously passed through his mind. Do I run through this Molotov? I've got to be weary of that second player. He actually gets that first frag, and then, you know, he's able to pull him off the bomb. It's just not enough time. That Molotov was everything for the side of G2. Yeah, and Nexa right there shows us why it's important not to just reface off the back of losing an angle, right? When Farley flashes him off main and he backs out, he doesn't immediately go back in and look for the fight. Farley was posted with the orb. That would have been Nexa dead, and that would have been Godsend winning the round. So sometimes it is better to play safe, wait for your team, and, uh, and yeah, get that defuse in. Nexa does it. G2 live to fight another round. Outside smokes allow Crystal to cross, and it's looking like they might try and split this B bomb site. Now, G2, they haven't seen anything outside. Oh, Ooh, dear. Jax has somehow lived to tell the tale there. And now has the rotation from Kenny. So in this situation, G2, they are looking to contest this ramp room and fight for it. But losing Jax and Kenny going back in for more. There are a lot of bodies on this angle now. Kenny drops the flash, and it does get them off the angle. That gives them a second chance. And Kenny's not the man you want to give second chances to. Now, on the back of holding down ramp room, G2 have just afforded a lot of players into this A site. The bomb might try and drop down the vent. Stiko's throwing a smoke into main in the hope that that can help get them there. I'm assuming that's the idea, especially with Crystal still down in this B bomb site. But it doesn't matter because G2 know that this bomb was towards ramp. And Kenny in with another. This is three in the round for Kenny S. Finally, they lay him to rest. And while this has happened, Crystal has wrapped into ramp. And G2 don't know about it. They've got no idea. So now there's a, a path opened on the back of this wrap from Crystal down into the B site. And G2, they're going to be uh, nastily surprised as this plant does come in down at B. 
But Godsend had to run, and that gave away all the info. So G2 are actually already here before Godsend have the plant in. Next is ahead of the Molotov. Crystal has no clue. Oh dear, pick a side, and he's got the right one. Flicks back for Nexa and sprays down the second. That looked like it was lost. He looks away for the plant. Crystal sees the barrel and swings, and Nexa does deal with them both. Oh boy. Yeah, like you said, that, that should have been a surprising plant, Harry. Like, G2 weren't considering it, but because there were only 25 seconds, Godsend start to run. They actually could have snuck a lot longer there, but they wanted to leave themselves ample time to take B. And in fact, with the running, it just allows G2 to early rotate. Kenny is so mobile in this game as well, right? Orping ramp, running back to A within seconds. He's dropping B as well when, when we see these lower takes if he's still alive. Yeah, I, I like the, the mobile AWP on the CT side of Nuke. That being said, G2, they're just trying to bail out water, water from this sinking boat because Godsend, they've got 19 round, T rounds. This is excellent for Godsend. If they can find double digits in this half, they are well on the way to taking their map pick. Oh, Crystal tries to peek ahead of the smoke. And that's a decision that comes back to punish him. Steeka running the gauntlet before the smokes have even popped. Oh, they all get by, just barely. Nexa's not content with these answers, though. He's still looking outside, and Zed will be the last man to cross behind these smokes, getting that bomb down through secret. Hunter is here to sound the early alarm, and the alarm might not be needed if Hunter can put on a bit of a class, but he's only good for one. And the damage onto Zed, it's still quite the advantage for G2. That cannot be understated enough. Godsend are really going to have to fight their way back into this round. Not only a man down, but Zen is like a whisper away from death. Kenny's even deep within the sight. Look at him. He loves combat orping, does Kenny? We love to see it, though. That's the other side of it. That's why he does it for us. <laughs> Mainly just for you, Harry. I was talking to him the other day. He said, I do this just for Harry to give him something to watch. And kind of aspire oh, to be yeah, almost. That's 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 good guy Kenny for you. Good guy Kenny. That sounds just like him. <laughs> oh, they're going back up. Jax has cleared this. He's just walked through the open window that was broken earlier in the round. G2 know this is an A take. Farley's gonna walk right into Nexa. Oh. Patience is a virtue, and he's got two before he falls. Amanek already tucked. Kenny Molly's gotta wait for the contact. There it is. No need. Amanek mows him down. And G2 six at the end of the half. They start to recover, but still a great T side for Godsend. Let's see where this one's going. We've got a quick break and we've got the action continuing after that.
Uh, on my couch, commando. Yeah. Pulling up with clips, extend <laughs>
But uh, yeah, they're going to need to start figuring out how they want to deal with that when it comes to the next gun round. G2, they're running it back, doing it again. Fast and ferocious outside. Molly's down, the scout tags a little bit, but as quick as it finds a shot, a shot finds him. Han Hunter and Amanek both with opening kills. And this is just another clean sweep for G2 by the looks of things. Zen's waiting for a knife in the vent. No one's rushing down lower. They've got another path. They've got secret to be. It's open for the taking. Nexa, he's got A as well. It gets worse and worse for God's sake. So yeah, they're already realizing we can't just take all these fights outside. So we're going to have to you know, start uh, using our info in hell without losing Farley and deciding whether we want to rotate B or wait for G2 to come and collapse and crunch on the A site. G2, they have a lot of nice just fast reactions, reactive plays, right? They do, they'll they take outside, not even necessarily with a game plan, but just with the idea of, okay, where, where the kills come is where we go. And that's that round for you. Nice and quick. Eight for G2. God sent. Their first full buy. Chance to show us what they got. No, I no. do think this... Sorry, Trace. No, no, I would love to hear what you have. I was going to say, man, I do think that this Vertigo second map is pretty interesting as yeah. well. Because if you remember, Hugo, it was a long while ago now, but like a year ago when this Godsend squad kind of first started to to show its face, uh, you know, a different looking squad to this. Yeah, Mac was Similar, on. yeah, yeah. You know, it was... It was interesting, at least, because the man who's still in the coaching slot now was a big fan of Vertigo. So I imagine this is still a map that God sent do try and get some time in on. But uh, I'm going to hold that thought because Zen has opened this round up. Shutting out Hunter already. It's looking like G2. They just wanted to crunch this A site. And on the back of burning out Zen, they do slow it down somewhat now, especially with Farley making his presence known over here towards hell. He's now rotated into heaven. If they do want to commit, I was going to say they got to get past Farley, but they make it look way too easy. Far too easy for my liking. Still Crystal here, and they don't know about him. He's playing on the other side of the hut, and Jax is going to take his head off. So this was looking good for Godsend. They take them out advantage early. Farley even finds another one outside, but G2 just with raw fragging power, they get into A, and now they sit with the man advantage and that bomb down. Stiko and Madden left in the 2v3 retake, and they might just have to play this one by the numbers and back on out and look to save. But as I was saying, Devil Walk loved Vertigo, man. Yeah. That was his impression. He was a big fan of like the tactical opportunities on that map, like the idea of misdirection. And even then, Godsend, they have they don't play it a hell of a lot, but whenever they have, you know, they haven't lost it yet. Well, they beat NIP and they beat Mouse Sports on it a few months ago. So, you know, they do have a bit of a record there. It's not like they're going into a map blind and going, oh my goodness, like what's going to happen? We don't know. Yeah. Let's think about Vertigo a year ago as well. I mean, there were not a lot of teams yeah. that are just grabbing Vertigo by the horns and saying, hey, we'll take this map on in full force, whereas Godsend, when they did find that sort of rhythm and that success, why would you not continue to run that, you know? G2, well, we're also one of those teams, funnily enough, right? Like, it's not it's not yeah. a go-to for them, but it's one of the, I think, was it DreamHack Tour, Harry? Am, am I saying the right event? The first event where Vertigo, where we work, where Vertigo came out, and G2, I remember them playing at the final. Uh, maybe they lost. I know Mouse Sports won that event with a new roster. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'm thinking of the wrong event. No, no, no. But... I think you are thinking of the right event there, Hugo. A lot of uh, thinking yeah. going on around. Yeah, yeah there there's is. a lot of thinking. Too much of there's it. a lot of uh, not events, just regular events as well yeah. that maybe would have been the plan for G2, but actually it's just this fast A play. They run by the vents and they hit A and they do it very, very well. They actually just annihilate everyone. So this round, it's already over. Dear, oh dear. Dominant stuff for G2. These have been clean rifle rounds, right? They haven't got, come close. They haven't been contested by Godsend. Madden trying to hold on. Oh my. They're not even going to let him get away with the AWP. He's found Kenny. That's a big kill at least. Denying his counter orping foe. I think counter orping like Madden's on the primary, but regardless, he's trying to get away with it alive. And Amanek has already dropped B to deny. And he ramp uh, fullback. T spawns is going to look like the best option. The only option. And that's exactly where he's gone. Hunter up the vent. Ooh, Madden. Perfect. The orb will be saved here for Godsend, but it's not the end of the world for G2. They're pretty rich. It's very rich of you to say, Hugo. Damn right. Bling, bling. Every time I come around your city, bling, bling. It, Godsend probably feeling the pressure, feeling the heat of this opponent right now. G2 not going down without a fight despite a slow start, a slow first half. 
These rounds have been fast on the T side. Quick out the door in this one. A lot of Ecos for God's sake, keep in mind, right? Save guns right there. Stiko is able to put up one. The orb does get some exits, but yeah, quick pause for God's sake. And I do wonder with those smokes, right? Like at what point they might get addressed by by Valve and say like, hey, you know what? Maybe just maybe dropping smokes and right clicking them next to the wall isn't really like, you know. Which one? Yeah, exactly. Like maybe it shouldn't work like that. But Nuke, notorious for having uh, paper thin walls in 1.6 many moons ago. We're just trying to relive that. Yeah, we, we've seen certainly that like even mouse spots have shown us like smoke bugs on this map where you want to rush hut and you drop yep. the smoke by the ladder and you put out the molly. Like, you know, it's a cool feature and it's, it's cool what we do, what people do in this game with the engine. But also like you could argue, do we want that? I don't know. It's, a, it's an argument for another time because this one is already full of frags. Finding the first is Zen. He drops Amina getting into the main smoke, almost avoids the flash. Kenny's going to trade that rotate down lower. That's where G2 are. They're going to vent dive in time. Jax with a great shot. Farley's here with the orb, but he's got to flick off. And I think Nexa knows that Molly goes deep, but Jax is going to swing the other side. Oh, Nexa doesn't cover. Not needed. The flank is in. And Crystal and Madden now have to drop vent to get back into the action or give it up. Yep. Might be time to just give it up. That looks like what they're going to do. Gonna hold on to this M4 and this AK and back out of the problem area, which is seemingly anywhere that G2 go. This time it was the lower bomb site, so we're gonna see a tie ball game at 11-11. This one has the makings of a Classico with overtime. Well, the worry for me is you say that, Trace, but right now it's just been one side yeah. in the second half. Yeah, that's the thing that scares me, right? Especially because when you're on this CT side, it becomes very easy to like reach this point where you're just getting pushed around and saving also becomes a necessity if you want to keep on being able to purchase. But like by that, very, by, by that kind of statement's very nature, you become less willing to ever take these risks. Like a two on three on paper, you look at it and it's like, well, that's achievable, that's doable, but you're less inclined to go for it if you're purchasing in the next round hinges on you keeping two players alive, which with max loss bonus, you can keep buying up as long as that's kind of what you're looking at. So it's a bit of an awkward spot to be in because it's like God sent, it's better to take the risks early than it is to leave them too late. But also if you take too many risks early and then they don't pan out, you've got nothing left in the late game anyway. So it's really about balancing those risks right now. And G2 are in no such category. You know, they've got loads of money. They're winning all these rounds. They're looking damn good while doing it. And so they've got that bank of cash. They can take every risk they want to. And so like in terms of the head to head, that's why we're getting a bit worried for God sent now who did have this huge lead and now it's eluded them. Yeah, they're even in heaven here. Godsend are watching for it, but Crystal has an MP9. That's not the weapon you want to hold down this fight. Farley's in hut, and that might be a surprise to G2 as Lobby has been taken. Amanek not rushing this one either. He's got a teammate below. Farley's gone above. Ooh, this timing's a little bit late. He's going to try and wrap Silo, but at this point, he won't see a thing, and G2 are going to hear him above. They they might just escalate the pace and take over this A site. Kenning putting pressure on, drawing the attention. Crystal has nowhere to look but up, and there's the flash double swing. I love it from G2. Calculated, and there's Farley coming in on that Silo wrap. He had to make noise. I'm sure Kenny was ready, and Stiko up the vent. It's currently Molly. He's got to wait for his time to strike. It's had a good game, but this is asking a hell of a lot from one player. And we come back, Harry, to the conversation that you just started on. Is it really worth it? Or would they rather buy in the next? This gun could be the difference between that and an eco round. And you're already falling short. And as doable as that was for Stiko, right? If he, if he has a great round, G2, just the threat, just the pressure of seeing three alive like on the that. other side. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. Can we take a look at that one again by any chance? Looking down the, uh, oh yeah, look at that. It's even got his like line of sight as well, right? Like the. Uh... Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, it's like we're playing COD. Whoa, this is the future. Oh, oh, maybe not. Don't change weapons, though, Stika. <laughs> that almost made me vomit. So here we go, 12 to 11. G2 in the lead for the first time in this matchup, as they are now the ones in full control. That's a great flick from Kenny. And as you said, Hugo, just that tiny bit of noise cue, that little, you know, second given to Kenny S to get ready for that fight is all a man like Kenny needs. So the reinvestment coming through for God's sake. Orp in the hands of Farley, and he's looking to get stuck in with it towards outside this time around. Kenny, nowhere to be found. Actually, he is. He is somewhere to be found. He's up on top of Silo looking for this exact fight. 
And it's a bit of an awkward one, right? Because if Farley tries to swing into this later, now that Kenny's posted up, that's a fight that Kenny should be winning every day of the week. His outside smoke's gonna go in. And this is now where Farley could reposition to keep an eye on the top of Hart. He's gonna keep looking outside. He's gonna kind of dedicate to watching this main cross instead. And you know, G2, they have enjoyed going for these crunches in through main into this A site. Yeah, Kenny's flashing A. So this doesn't look like an A commitment. This is uh, a little bit of a fakeeru, I think, thrown in by G2. And it's worked brilliantly. All the attention only for a moment was into that A site. Kenny needs the trade. Missed shot from both players. Kenny. Oh, Late in the shots out, Kenny, you cheeky man. And now Nexus springing the trap from the door. Godsend don't even know where this is ending up. Like, no. it could be anywhere. It could be A, it could be B. You can make great, great cases for both of them. You saw the bomb get down through the, uh, the secret area, but that doesn't mean it's an A commitment. Although quite soon it has to be a commitment somewhere. There's 20 seconds left. You gotta make your mind up. And Hunter and Nexa both uh -oh. falling at A. Now it has to come into this B side play later in the round. God Center already rotating because they've cleared A. They hear the doors opening. It's a two on three for G2 in the post plant. Yeah, no question about it. God Center give this a go. They they have to win this round. This is the best chance they've been given all half long since the guns have come out for G2. Oh, Amanex pushing up the timing. He gets one. Stiko's holding on and he will trade. Kenny, quick shot in the vent. Crystal climbing down and now Stiko coming from the ramp side with a flash that bounces off. Kenny still gets to hold his angle. Stiko's going to drop in, oh, yeah. and Kenny is quick. It's what we expect. It's what we come to know with this man. But 13 to 11, that was Godsend shot at it. That was their chance, and it falls on dead ears. Yeah, there's a world where they don't even... I think it was Amanek there at ramp. There's a world where he doesn't even win that or get one right here. And that yeah. probably changes the face of that round. But Kenny, good positioning. And was set up for this last one to take down Stiko. So and I actually really like the take as well. Right? Like Harry said, like they did look like a. If Nexa didn't die to hunt, uh, to not to hunt, to Crystal swinging out vent, that that probably would have been Kenny coming back out secret and going, you know, into a. He just didn't want to get seen by the orb in heaven that was hanging around. Ooh. But once they know it's looking a, and, and the kills come through for Godsend, G2 go. Well, we have secret. We can just go B. We know there's no rotates. Godsend is scared of a. Are they? Zed. Are they? Oh well, oh. Zen try. He he was literally a second away from hitting the time as well really a second earlier or later would have suited him well there crystal with the scout desperately trying to find something through this smoke but they are already past him down into the b site they go they're gonna leave kenny s and nexa to keep dueling outside kenny what can he offer oh missed shot onto crystal but not the end of the world. While this is happening, by the way, Farley is, or Farley rather, has wrapped all the way up onto top silo. This is a huge bit of information to have. You know it's not outside anymore. And so that leaves one option here. They've gone down secret and they're hitting B. So God said they're gonna rotate everyone towards this bomb site now. Madden inside, the decon door swings wide though at the most unfortunate timings. And while Stiko tries, he had to find five, about half a second apart, just boom, 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 didn't work. And so 14 on the board for G2. They keep that round pretty damn clean up against the partial investment. With the exception of the round prior that ends on B, Godson have had that info every time, Harry. Like you said, they've known where these plays are uh, are ending up, but G2 just had such good spacing and trading when they come out secret and then and, and take this B bomb side that Godsend have never been able to get any multi kills, never been able to like anchors have been struggling to get one in, in their site. So this has just been great work from G2 to deny, to shut down those individual players on rotation. More fast yard control, it's only Amanek. Farley. Oh, that's perfect. Avenek drops the smoke. Farley picks the angle perfectly and it takes him down. The rest of G2 going ramp. Stiko, he's about to get this info. He has a grenade. It could do damage. It goes far, but it's hit a good bit of health off. The AWP fires off and Kenny trades Nexus death to Farley. Now a two on four. Okay, two on three. G2 won it last time, but this is, this is God Sense round through and through. G2 would need to do so much to make this theirs. No one's watching heaven. That's my only worry, but Crystal should be able to turn around on a timing eventually. Shouldn't stay here forever, especially if G2 start to make noise. So there it is, he falls off the top and starts holding.
instead. G2 roaming around, looking for kills, but Godsend, I like this uh, aggressive play there. They're not just waiting around and gambling 2-2 two, two on a site. They're looking for info. They're looking for G2, and they might just find what they want. Oh, timing couldn't be worse for Kenny. And now Crystal should have this kill locked in. This might be 12 for Godsend. Hunter, 1v4, and an insane 1v4 to have to pull off. They've still got one player down in B, but now a third man rotates in to reinforce the A site, and Crystal was there, ready and waiting. So God sent 12 now on the board. And the way that they navigate that four on two is great. They don't give breathing room over, as you say. They do just hunt down these remaining players. But this is one of the problems, right? G2, the money was always in their favor, and that much hasn't changed. You know, these buys are still coming in regardless. And so you do have to grind your way back to a victory if you're godsend. It's not the case that, you know, winning that one round there resets your opponents, and then you've got a nice, easy, easy path to the finish line here on this map. No, couldn't be further from the truth. Amonek's got max money almost, for crying out loud. He can buy till the end of time. He's all fine. If G2 on CT side, then maybe that could have done it, <laughs> but not, not on the T side. They hit eight rounds in a row, Harry. So, yeah, this is uh, this is not an easy one for Godsend. You know, even though they get away with four alive, all it would take is one reset round and, and the map probably falls in favor of G2 at that point because they break the cash back and have map point on Godsend's pick. That's Nuke to start this series. We've got Vertigo coming up after this one, no matter when that will be. And that's going to be an exciting matchup, as this already has tended to be. Madden running through the Molotov, taking A, dropping the smoke. Oh dear, it bounces past the body, goes in deep as well. He's going to try and fight with it. It's perfect. They have nades out. Kenny Court next to trades. They're going to try and hit A, but into the shotgun. They go, Jax, getting one for one. And these anchors are finally holding. Godsend are trading effectively, but as soon as I say that, AMNX strikes back. The rotate on up is good for Farley, and it's perfect for Godsend. Two players standing. Farley does the damage, and everyone traded one for one there until Farley shut it down at the end. So that was what we wanted from Godsend all this time along. A four-man A setup that works wonders. The climb back. Well, they're back in the game now, but it's G2. They're going to have some money to spend here. So let's see, perhaps, just maybe. I'm not saying, but there's still a chance here for G2. Yeah, this one is uncertain as it gets, right? Winning one, one round was a bit of a worry. Not a worry, right? Like, that's good for Godsend, but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you're, you're back in control. But this this now looks a lot better for Godsend. Finding life near the end of regulation. Could it take them over the line? That's the question. Next to 22 kills. Harry, you said it earlier in the pregame as well. He was a beast in Cologne, and he is continuing that performance here and now. Yeah, GT do have to be careful though, because while a lot of them still have cash, that doesn't apply to the whole squad. And they are kind of teetering at a point now where God said, if they pick this up, they can leap, skip and jump their way to a win here on their map pick of Nuke. Farley trying to find shots on these players crossing. Madden spray doesn't get anything done either. So G2, they get four players down. And this is now like the versatility of the fact that these outside smokes haven't always meant an outside play can maybe come back to be fruitful for G2. But God sent, they're a little bit paranoid. They've rotated fairly heavily. And one of these players is Farley with this orb. Looking to get stuck in. Four players on the other side, Farley. Not going to have an easy task ahead of him. Drops that smoke, but he wow. battles through it. Only good for one there. A second man tucked into the corner is Stiko, and he goes unchecked. Stiko always oh, caught a timing. Kenny was just keeping an eye on it, but now Stiko's in. I almost called him Sneeko, and that's yeah. almost what he was. Makes sense. But he does get dropped by Amanek. Oh. Nex is holding for the rotate and almost doubles up with that spray, and he will do that. Crystal does manage the trade, but it's a little late in the round, and this 1v3... Feels unwinnable, looks unwinnable. It's not a nice spot to be in, and he might just have to... I was going to say he might have to save, but he's going to flash himself for a peek down through the vent. Yeah, he's got to aim higher for that one. That one was pretty cool, though. Oh, I, mean, I love that flash. you got to aim higher and a little looks, bit to the right. It looks like you know what you're doing in that moment. Yeah. Until it lands, and then... It's really good when you get it right. It, it pops at the, just at the bottom of the ladder. It's great for popping your teammate in, but the timing's good for you to do it as well.
unfortunate crystal he's got his tricks on this map maybe not all of them as refined as the rest right we saw them actually uh got got sent win a series over i want to say og um at 15 14 from crystal doing the silent drop off of heaven if we all remember that one yes good and uh and yeah that's a, also a fairly easy trick to learn looks hard but do it a few times and you'll get the gist uh, yeah, so Crystal, he's got his tricks. Not all of them saving his bacon in this round, though. 15 to 13, and that was a round of timings, like you said, Harry, from Stiko catching one into B, and Amanek faking the bomb because he had no cover. Great awareness from Amanek. He, we, we've been sleeping on him, but he's up there on the scoreboard as well. To even Nexa hiding in door, looking away, getting checked, but Godson thinking it's clear, and then he peeks in a second later and gets two kills before Crystal trades on the lobby flank. Like, that's so unfortunate. Crystal's probably calling, like, lobby clear, and lobby well it was not clear 15 to 13 for the money now Zen he has no idea oh he's going to realize the hard way running forward and into Hunter Madden his turn of the action he gets a dig nothing more and this is falling apart yeah this might be it Steve oh, with the no. dig only good for one we needed him to go huge there Farley falling and it's Crystal once again left to clutch wasn't able to do it last time. He made noise on the molly, so they know. And Hunter is ready and waiting to go. 16 